Smash like. This is, you know, because I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking benevolent, superior, you know, civilization. They seem to be benevolent. Um, they're very patient. Um, they, they may have allowed proto-humans to survive uh, from the very beginning. Because again, the implication is that those primitive beings might have been on their way out because they um, would have been outcompeted. Yeah, the leopards would have got them, or right. uh, yeah, exactly. The tapers would have ate the last of their food. You know? And that brings us to the hotel room. Well, I won't even say hotel room, bedroom, bedroom suite. Um, and as you yeah. astu- as you astutely pointed out, when he arrives, um, we don't immediately see him. We see his perspective from inside the pod looking out. The pod is still there because the screens are now registering malfunction. Non, yeah, non-function. And then the- um, So there's still a tie back to the reality that we came from. The Briefly. transition, the cinematic transition to that moment too, is on his, is from the psychedelic thing that we just saw to back to the, to the more traditional like prop mm-hmm. is his eye again. It's the psychedelic color and then the colors bleed out to a realistic looking mm-hmm. eye, right? Mm-hmm. So it's actually like Kira D'Elia's eye, mm-hmm. I assume. Because mm-hmm. um, he does have pretty striking, like grayish. Uh, super striking. Blue eyes. Yeah, they really, they really stick it, out. It makes you wonder if he was cast for that. You know, like if that was a contributing factor in the, in the fact that he was cast. That role, I don't know I why don't he mean. was, uh, I don't know why he was cast. Um, uh, I, yeah, I don't know. Um, he, yeah, I don't. He was just coming off of uh, a, a movie that I only saw maybe three or four years ago. Uh, what happened to Bunny? Something I can't remember the last name of the character. It's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a good movie. You should check it out. It's a it's a whodunit. Uh, Lawrence Olivier is is the detective. Olivier uh, and uh, Kier Delay is is a suspect. Um, uh, he talks a lot more than he does in this movie. And it, it kept me guessing um, because Bunny, I can't remember what the last name is, uh, the, the eponymous subject has disappeared uh, very inexplicably. Where has she gone? Um, check it out. It's black and Funny white. Why did you say Bunny? Because I have in my notes here that Bowman is like a scared rabbit being taken to the vet. <laughs> That's he's, exactly, yeah, right. He's, he's sitting in element. that pod and he doesn't know what to do next. And he's just like, oh my God, what, what just happened? Do? Right. What can, he has no idea. He, he's not even really himself anymore. No. Uh, well, he's, he's, he's traumatized. He's traumatized, traumatized for sure. And interestingly, and I think this is an interesting choice by Kubrick that when he emerges from the pod, um, and for one scene, the pod is still there. And then the next scene, the pod is gone. Yes. But you see that Bowman has aged uh, inside that helmet. How long did the journey take? Did the journey take years in his time? Did it take as long as it took in the movie uh, seconds? And that the, uh, the journey is so hard on the human body that it caused that kind of aging? We don't know. So I think we're led to believe through some indications of uh, Bowman's... Um... The age, the human aging process, if you want to call it that, that um, time is is not operating at the same. Right. You know, it's just it's right. time is either immaterial here or it's or it's just off. So you have he he first examines the bathroom, which I don't even remember seeing before in previous yeah. viewing. So I'm sure it's always been there, and it just didn't register with me. Same. But, the bedroom is the more is, is the more iconic scene, so that's the one that I guess stuck with me. Uh, but he first looks at the bed, at the bathroom, and then, as you mentioned earlier, he hears something or senses something behind him in the in the main bedroom, and he slowly turns around. Now, after having been through this traumatic experience, led by a, what we assume is an alien intelligence, what's behind him? And he turns so slowly and there's no noise. Everything is dead silent. There's no music this time, nothing. So it's that psychological terror of what, what's in the room with me. Uh, and he turns around and of course he sees himself. 
but an older version of himself, even older than older than he was coming out of the the portal. Um, but he's in a uh, a smoking jacket or a bathrobe, um, having a leisurely meal, lunch or dinner. What does this all mean? What's what's happening? What's going on here? So they don't make eye contact. He doesn't make eye contact with himself, right? So he's in a face suit and he sees sees himself eating. He sees himself eating, but they never they never look at each other. Right. And then the and then the the man at the table, the bowman at the table in the smoking jacket senses something. Right. You see the back of his head, and he kind of goes. Yeah. Yeah. And then he looks and there's nothing there, but he gets up out of his chair to investigate. And it's this kind of brilliant way of, uh, again, um, how should I say it? Uh, He, he, Cooper is keeping you off balance, keeping you completely confused as to what's happening here. You don't know what to make of it. I mean, when you're watching the movie in real time, you have no clue. It's only later when you come out that you have to, you're like, hmm, you got to think about it or you got to watch it again, or you got to watch it again and again or you got to re- read somebody else's interpretation in the magazine as to what happened. Yeah. So is the, is the hotel room a zoo? Is he being kept there in what the alien intelligence assumes is an environment that is a natural environment for his species? Right. Is it, or is it in his mind? Is the room not, physically real but it's it's something that's happening in his mind um how much time is elapsing between the time that one version of himself looks at another version is it real time or is a lot of time is is he is he living out a is he like picard in in the uh that uh great episode of tng where he lives an entire other existence the inner yeah, light the, the inner light is it like that we really can't be sure we don't know I don't know. It's not really important, but it's one of those dream, things is happening. It's a dreamscape. So, you know, I don't know if uh, I actually was talking about a lot of this stuff today. Um, was talking about the idea of the human zoo as a uh, possible explanation for the uh, Fermi paradox. Hmm. Um, the, uh, the idea of like um, lucid dreaming, which I experimented with a couple times and uh not not even like intention, but like just you ever do you ever like eat too much pasta, lay down on the couch and just have one of those like great naps, and mm-hmm. you're like you, you got the radio on or a television on. Oh yeah, I've and had you them. Fall asleep, but you're lightly dreaming. Yep. And you have a dream that lasts a week in the dream, but you're on the same track of the song when you wake up. You disorient. I have no way to explain how that happens, uh-huh. but that's what's it's altered consciousness. On. That's what's going on in this scene yeah, to me. I think I think that's a good interpretation. And and uh, you know when he turns to investigate where he just was, the earlier version of the spacesuit, it's almost like an echo of the a psychic echo of the past. Right. You know, right. so we're we're getting a sense of time. We're getting a sense of distorted time. You know, yeah. not human. What a, what a, what a, a brilliant scene, a scene that when I first saw it, I came out thinking I don't know what the hell that was. <laughs> what, what's what really i came out thinking what is the meaning of the white hotel room um but now you know it, it's 30 plus years since the first time i saw it and i've seen it you know many many times since then um now it all seems pretty straightforward but what he did was he he basically tackled the problem of how do i show what a dream is like and the example you just gave is perfect. I mean, he's he's literally showing you what what a version of a dream is like in this mind bending location after you've just been transported either backwards in time, forwards in time, across the universe, timeless, uh, timeless uh, area where time has no meaning. Any right. of these things are a possibility. We all know what's going. On. Uh, you're you've been converted to pure energy. You exist only as thought. Right. Any of any of these possibilities exist. 